Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To create a sales receipt in QuickBooks Online, click the plus new button in the navigation bar and then click the sales receipt link under the customer's heading. Alternatively, roll over the sales link in the navigation bar and click the customer's link in the side menu that appears to open the customer's page. Then click the Create Sales Receipt link under the Action Columns drop-down for the customer for whom to create a sales receipt. If needed, use the Customer drop-down in the Sales Receipt window to select the customer and add their information to the form. Alternatively, you can also select the Add New command from this drop-down menu to open a customer pane at the right side of the window where you can add a new customer. If you add a new customer, click the Save button at the bottom of the pane to save the customer and close the pane. To the right of the customer drop-down is an email field which contains the customer's email address if you entered it when creating the customer's record. You can enter an email here if you didn't enter it when you created the customer or if you are adding a customer on the fly. If needed to send copies of this invoice to others, Click the CC slash BCC link by this field to show additional CC and BCC fields in a drop-down menu. Then enter the email addresses into these fields as needed and click the Done button. To mark this sales receipt to save but email later, check the Send Later checkbox below the email field. The billing address shows the selected customer's billing address. Enter the date of the sale into the Sales Receipt Date field if needed. If shipping is enabled, a Shipping To, Ship Via, Shipping Date, and Tracking Number field also appear in this area. At the far right side of the window, the Sales Receipt Number field shows the next highest available Sales Receipt Number. If you enabled custom transaction numbers in sales forms, then you can change this if needed. If you enabled location tracking, a location drop-down also appears here. If you enabled class tracking on a transaction level, then a class drop-down also appears here. The shipping from or location of sale field shows your company's default sales address. You can change this if needed. To add a tag to this transaction, click into the Tags field and then select a tag from the menu of Tag Choices. Repeat as needed to apply tags from any relevant tag groups you have created. Alternatively, to add a new tag, type the tag's name, select it from the Add Choice in the drop-down menu, and then follow the on-screen prompts to add it to a new tag group for reporting purposes. Then use the Payment Method drop-down to select the customer's method of payment. The Reference Number field is used to record any associated reference number, like a check number, for example. Use the Deposit To drop-down to select the account into which the money received is placed. The next area is the Line Items area where you enter the products and or services sold. If you enabled service dates and sales forms, you can enter the service date of services provided into the service date column. To select an existing item from the products and services list, click into the product service column and then select the item from the drop down menu. If SKUs are enabled, the item SKU appears in the SKU column. Its description appears in the description column. You can also type a description here if desired. Enter the quantity of the product bought or service provided by typing it into the quantity field labeled QTY. The rate for the product or service per quantity unit appears in the rate field. You can change it if needed. The quantity field is multiplied by the rate field to show the total amount for the line item in the amount field. If entering a product or service without a rate or quantity, you can simply enter the total amount into the amount field if needed. If the product or service is taxable, ensure the Tax Field checkbox for the line item is checked. If classes are enabled and assigned by one to each row in transaction forms, then you can select a class from the Class drop-down. 
After completing the first line item, continue adding line items until all the items are added to the sales receipt. At the left end of each line item row is a selection handle. To change the order of the line items, roll your mouse pointer over this handle until it turns into a four-pointed crossed arrow. Then click and drag the line item up or down and release it to reorganize the line items if needed. To delete a line item, click the delete button at the right end of the line item row to delete. To add a new line item row, click into the bottom line item row to automatically add a new row. Alternatively, to add four new rows at once, click the Add Lines button under the Line Items area. To delete all line items, click the Clear All Lines button in this same location. To enter a message to show on the sales receipt, type it into the message displayed on sales receipt field. To enter a message that appears for this sales receipt in the customer's statement, type it into the message displayed on statement field. In the lower left corner of the invoice is the attachments field, which lets you attach a file to the sales receipt. You can drag and drop files onto the field or click the field's name or icon to open a file upload dialog box that you can use to browse for and then select the file to attach. Note the 20 megabyte file attachment size limit. In the lower right corner of the sales receipt is the subtotal, taxable subtotal, sales tax, discount, shipping and tax on shipping, total, amount received, and balance due field information, depending on which sales form features you enabled. The Select Tax Rate dropdown lets you select either the default based on location choice if using the automatic sales tax feature, or select a custom tax rate if you created those. Based on your selection, the sales tax to collect appears to the right. If using the automatic sales tax and the based on location choice, then you can click the See the Math link under the sales tax amount to see the sales tax information and calculations and correct it if needed in the pane that appears at the right side of the window. We'll discuss this pane in detail in a later lesson in this chapter. For now, note that if you need to override the automatic sales tax calculation, you can click the Override This Amount link in this pane's lower right corner to open a section at the bottom of the pane that lets you enter either a new rate or amount to charge for sales tax, and then select a reason from the dropdown. Then click the adjacent Confirm button to confirm the override. You can then close the pane by clicking the Close button in its lower right corner. Alternatively, to apply a custom sales tax rate if you created one, select the sales tax rate from the Select Tax Rate dropdown. The amount of sales tax to collect then appears in a field to the right, which you can change if needed. On a related note, if you enabled a discount field in your sales forms, you can use the Discount dropdown that appears next to the Select Tax Rate dropdown to select either the Discount Percent or Discount Value Choice. Then enter the percentage or amount into the field to the right. The discount is related to sales tax because you can click the button that looks like up and down arrows in a blue circle to the left of the sales tax rate and discount fields to switch the order of the two fields in the invoice each time you click it. Doing this changes whether the discount is applied after sales tax is calculated or before sales tax is calculated based on the order in which the fields appear in the sales receipt. If shipping is enabled, you can enter the amount of shipping into the shipping field. The tax on shipping field, if enabled, shows the shipping sales tax. The total field shows the sales receipt total amount. The balance due field below that shows the remaining balance due, which is most often zero. The toolbar at the bottom of the sales receipt lists the actions you can perform on it. Different options appear here when creating a new sales receipt versus opening an existing one. When creating a new sales receipt, Cancel and Clear buttons appear at the left side of the toolbar. Clicking Cancel cancels the sales receipt's creation. Clicking Clear clears all the fields but keeps the window open. In the middle of the toolbar are the Print or Preview, Make Recurring, and Customize buttons. 
Clicking the Print or Preview button shows a pop-up menu that lets you check a Print Later checkbox or click either the Print or Preview or Print Packing Slip commands. Checking the Print Later checkbox lets you filter by that delivery method if you batch print sales receipts later. Clicking the Print or Preview command saves the sales receipt and opens a window that shows it as a PDF and lets you preview or print it. Clicking the Print Packing Slip command saves the sales receipt and creates a packing slip from it and shows it as a PDF so you can print it. Clicking the Make Recurring button opens the Recurring Sales Receipt window. This window lets you create a recurring sales receipt which has the same options as a recurring invoice and which we discussed in a previous lesson. You can click the Cancel button in the toolbar to cancel the recurring sales receipt and return to the main sales receipt screen. Clicking the Customize command in the toolbar lets you select a new sales receipt template to use, edit the current template, or create a new template by selecting a command in the pop-up menu that appears. Creating form templates is discussed in a separate lesson. After creating the sales receipt, you can click the Save button in the toolbar to save it. Alternatively, directly click the Save and Send button at the right end of the toolbar to save and send the sales receipt by email, or click its drop-down arrow and then click either the Save and New or Save and Close command to either save the sales receipt and create a new one, or save the sales receipt and close the window. After saving a sales receipt, a new More button also appears in the toolbar at the bottom of the sales receipt. Clicking this button shows commands for Copy to copy the sales receipt, Void to void the sales receipt, Delete to delete the sales receipt, Transaction Journal to open a report that lists the accounts and credit and debit amounts for the sales receipt, and Audit History which shows an audit history of the sales receipt. You can click any of these actions to perform the related activity. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.